This video is essentially a review of my experience with the Pixel Experience ROM for the Essential Phone. For those that forgot, here's a brief overlook of these specs, with the main things holding this phone back being the ancient Snapdragon 835 chip, as well as the normal for the age 60Hz refresh rate for the display. But what is it like actually using the phone on Android 12 in 2024? And more importantly, is Android 13 worth upgrading to? Hello everyone, this is Matt from Real World Review, and I guess this is the second phone that I've put a ROM on that has a Snapdragon 835 chip. I was working on a video for the Snapdragon 855 Pixel 4 XL, but I'll talk about that one another day. So quick refresher for those that are curious about what the Essential Phone is, though I would assume you kind of already have one if you're watching these types of videos. Either way, we get the Snapdragon 835 chip with 4GB of RAM, 128GB of storage that is not expandable, with a 5.71 inch technically 2K LCD with a 60Hz refresh rate and a notch for the 8MP front camera, titanium frame with a ceramic back making this phone 185 grams, single loudspeaker, USB-C 2.0 port, that charges the 3040 milliamp battery with 27 watts, but let's say realistically under 10 watts of charging speed. We get a fingerprint scanner on the back, two 13 megapixel cameras, one that's black and white, but literally the same exact sensor as the color one. All cameras shoot 4K at 30 frames per second, including the front camera. There's two dots for the accessories, some that seem like a myth, and lastly, some of the best color options that I've seen on a phone. Now this phone did run Android 7.1 all the way up to Android 10 officially. That's actually better than what Samsung did with the Samsung S8 going from Android 7 to Android 9 only. Of course, Android 14 is out for Pixel phones nowadays, but in the modding community, only a handful of phones have that, while a decent amount have Android 13 and most have Android 12. Today I will be focusing on Android 12, but I will put Android 13 on this phone and talk about that near the end of this video. Lastly, the Android 12 that I am running seems to be abandoned with a June 2022 security patch. Technically this ROM is called Pixel Extended 4.6, but it seems like the same one as a Pixel experience that I've run on other phones. For starters, this is actually decent on the battery. I'm not seeing a major hit on the battery in either positive or negative ways. As for using the phone, it is showing its age. Swiping through gives you some drop frames and just awkward feeling animations, but never any crashes, just minimal slowdowns. Compared to stock Android 10, clearly Android 12 is forcing this phone to pull more weight, especially since the processor is only meant to go to Android 11 officially. But still, we get the benefits of Android 12 with the benefits of modifying the software. For one, we still have the fingerprint scanner, but you also gain a fairly reliable face unlock. It's not the best, but it's definitely better than some budget phones that I've tested recently. Everything is supposed to work on this phone, and it seems to be working for me. And seeing that face unlock was added to this phone that normally doesn't have it is pretty awesome. We get all the home screen and styling features that Material U brings. And honestly, it kind of feels crazy putting this on this phone where the infamous founder was also the co-founder of Android. But like I said, everything is working, even the button to toggle Wi-Fi on or off, something that Pixel Android 14 phones haven't even figured out yet. We do get a bunch of toggles like the camera and mic cut off, or a caffeine button, which should be in every phone, allowing you to turn off auto lock for 5, 10, 30, or infinite minutes which does go back to normal when you do lock the screen, for those wondering. The other major changes are in the settings, giving us standard Android 12 quality of life upgrades, as well as upgrades to those upgrades. You get something called Snow House, which gives you some Lineage OS style modifications from toggling status button icons to double tapping to sleep, all the way to using the volume buttons to seek forward or backward for songs. There's actually not many toggles, but there are some quite powerful ones. The only thing that's really missing is an ambient screen mode. I did leave lift to wake on, which is cool for having the screen wake and unlock via face unlock, but I did find that the screen would end up lighting up more often than I would like to, so I did have to disable that feature. There's oddly no double tap to wake, so it makes it feel old by forcing you to push the power button or the fingerprint scanner to make the screen to come on. At least there is an option for quick unlock for those that want to type in their password and not press OK, which should be in every phone. Truly, I have yet to find anything that slows down this phone besides running major games and apps that rely on fast processing. As for apps, generally Android 10 should be enough to run and download anything, but having Android 12 will prevent apps from telling you that they're not supported on your device. 
The built-in apps are pretty much just basic ones keeping the phone slim, which is how Essential did with this phone in the first place. Even the camera app is a stock one. No G-cam here, though I assume you can put that on if you'd like. It probably would take better photos because the stock camera is just not that good. I'm just surprised at how, besides some of the animations, this phone runs Android 12 with ease. But does that make this phone much better? Now, if you're running Android 10 for the longest time, it kind of sucks because now you have to erase the phone to get Android 12 or 13. Still, this mix with the operating system will make the phone feel a little bit slower, but the rewards definitely make it worth the jump. As someone that had this phone lying around, it doesn't really feel worth modding the phone to get it to the same place. You can pick up the Pixel 4 for a reasonable price, which gives you Android 13 with ease. Of course, the reason you would choose the Essential phone is because of the design, which not a lot of phones look like this. Sure, the camera and processor hold the phone back, but at the end of the day, this is a phone from 2017. I believe that buying a new phone is definitely a better idea, but can definitely respect those that decide to allow this phone to live on through ROMs. As for using the phone on Android 12, it's a decent upgrade with some quality of life improvements, but I would still like to move on to Android 13 and really see how that treats this phone. For me, this will take a couple weeks, but for you, maybe a second or two. Okay, so we're back with Android 13, and I gotta say, why? For one, the ROM that I chose isn't as stable as the Android 12 one that I had, meaning a 10 to 20% slower feeling phone with what benefits? We actually lose the enhanced aspects, but gain the added benefits of Android 13. Like asking if you want notifications when you install a new app, or more color options for customization. Android 13 in general brings little over Android 12, but at least Lift Awake works a little bit better than before. But seriously, I looked it up and barely found any differences, with most being just in the background. Oh yeah, the music player is different, but that's about it. You may think that there has to be some added benefits, but ultimately it's visual differences, which seem easy to change given the nature of installing ROMs in general. At the end of the day, this is a very specific video. I do not recommend buying the Essential Phone just to put a ROM on it. There are many cheap devices and even flagships that will go above and beyond in performance and features, and even run very similar ROMs. Instead, this video is for those like me that want to breathe life into an old Essential Phone. That said, don't do this. The Samsung S8 error processor has been through a lot, and $100 can get you an S9 or even some Samsung S10s. Double that, and you can actually get a Samsung S21, which is kind of insane. But if you do decide to try this, good luck. Even getting this from Android 12 to Android 13 was a pain, given half the time my TWRP wouldn't respond to touch until I found the random flash file to put on here that would fix it. I will, however, try to suffer again and put Android 14 on here, if that ever happens. And this concludes my auto review, but not, of Android 12 and 13 versions for the Essential Phone. I will leave the links for the ROMs in the description if you dare to try this. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.